This is the video lesson for Work Energy Theorem. The learning intention for this lesson is, I am learning to investigate work in terms of energy transfer using the Work Energy Theorem. The success criteria for this lesson are, I can characterize the Work Energy Theorem in words and mathematically. I can explain how work is the transfer of energy. And finally, I can compare how the work energy theorem functions in conservative and non-conservative situations. So what is the work energy theorem? So the work done on an object equals that object's change in kinetic energy. So that's the basic idea of the work energy theorem. So work done on an object equals that object's change in kinetic energy. So objects only gain energy when work is done on them. So a gain in energy happens when work is done on the object. And then similarly, objects have energy or objects that have energy can do work. So if an object uh, has work done on it, then it gains energy and objects have energy that have energy can do work. And we're going to look at a few examples where we get to see where an object uh, gains energy from, do, from having work done on it and where an object that has energy can do work. So what is the mathematical formula for the work energy theorem? So here we have W equals delta Ke. So what does that mean? So we have W equals work and delta Ke equals change in kinetic energy. So the delta here, delta, so delta equals change. We've seen this before, uh, especially with like velocity and acceleration, where delta, uh, delta D for uh, change in displacement uh, over time equals, change in, equals velocity. So this is the change in kinetic energy. We can write change in kinetic energy as Ke final minus Ke initial. So this is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So delta Ke equals Ke final minus Ke initial. So how does the work energy theorem operate in conservative versus non-conservative systems? So the work energy theorem is only valid in conservative systems. So it only really holds true in a conservative system. So work only, uh, only becomes, so work only becomes kinetic energy entirely in a conservative system. In non-conservative systems, some of the work done on the object will be lost as heat due to friction. So if we look at the equation where we have work is equal to the change in kinetic energy plus we have friction, the force of friction here. So some of this work gets lost as friction um, when we have a, when we have friction in the system. So let's look at a couple of examples of the work energy theorem. So here we have a cuckoo clock, uh, where these weights make the clock mechanism work. So the weights pull on, uh, pull on springs on the inside that, uh, give the springs, uh, the energy to move the, the clock dial. So the, the hands on the clock move because of the springs inside are wound because of these weights. So you have to reset the weights uh, every day. The weights fall, the weights are pulled by gravity. So, the, so gravity is doing work. Gravity does work on the weights. And so if we look at the work energy theorem here, so we have work 
is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So as the weights are falling, the kinetic energy is increasing. So kinetic energy goes up, so work goes up. So that's in this case. And then in the second case here, where we have this roller coaster, the roller coaster starts, so the kinetic energy initial for the roller coaster at the bottom of the hill is at zero. And as the roller coaster gets pulled to the top of the hill by a little motor and the, uh, that pulls on this chain, the kinetic energy increases. So the kinetic energy uh, as the roller coaster moves up the hill is increasing. So it doesn't matter what the kinetic energy is. Let's say it gets up to 500,000 joules. It's probably not that high, but it doesn't matter. So because our work, according to the work energy uh, theorem, is final kinetic energy minus an initial kinetic energy. Our work then is, in this case, 500,000 joules. And if we imagine the roller coaster looking something like this, where we have the roller coaster cars being pulled up the top of the hill, when the car gets at the top of the hill, it has all this potential energy. And so the car has energy that it can use to do work as it goes down the hill. Uh, and so at the top of the hill, it has zero kinetic energy because it's stopped. And at the bottom of the hill, it has lots of kinetic energy. So it does work going down the hill as well. All right, everybody, once you're done with the video lesson and you've finished the guided notes, you can work on the assignment and then take the exit ticket and then you get ready to move on to the next lesson. As always, I remind you to keep asking questions. It's how you learn new things.